What makes us call a person a giant? Here are some ways to place the term in context. Typically, the height of Americans today ranges between 5 feet 4 inches and 5 feet 10 inches, according to National Health Statistics Report No. 10, October 22, 2008. Only 20 players in National Basketball Association history have exceeded a listed height of 7 feet 3 inches, with only a few reaching as tall as 7 feet 7 inches. Some, but not all, of the tallest players have the condition known as gigantism or giantism, a condition usually caused by a tumor on the pituitary gland of the brain. These terms are typically applied to those whose height is not just in the upper 1% of the population, but also several standard deviations above the mean for people of the same sex, age, and ethnic ancestry. The tallest person in recorded history was Robert Pershing Wadlow, born in February 22, 1918, and died in July 15, 1940. He was sometimes called the Alton Giant or the Giant of Illinois because that's where he was born and raised. His height was 8 feet 11 inches and he weighed 490 pounds at his time of death. With these facts in mind, let's review a sampling of the many reports of finds of very tall human remains on this continent. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The bones tell the tale. Extremely ancient human remains have been found throughout New York State and New England that date back to at least 9000 BC. A report from the Syracuse Herald American in 1983 said that anthropologists from the Buffalo Museum of Science dug up 1,400 artifacts from a site called Phoenix Hilltop. The following county historical report published in 1824 reported that in 1811, rude metals, a pipe and other articles were uncovered at an Indian mound on Mount Morris in New York State in association with the remains of a giant of enormous size. A History of Livingston County, New York, 1824 When Jesse Stanley came to Mount Morris in 1811, an Indian mound nearly 100 feet in diameter and from 8 to 10 feet high covered the site of the late General Mills residence. The mound had long been crowned by a great tree which had recently fallen under the axe. Deacon Stanley was told that when freshly cut, it disclosed 130 concentric circles or yearly growths. About the year 1820, the mound was removed, and in its removal, arrowheads, a brass kettle, and knives were thrown out. A number of skeletons were also disinterred. Among the bones was a human skeleton of enormous size, the jawbone of which was so large that Adam Holslander placed it, mask-like, over his own chin and jaw. He was the largest man in the settlement, and his face was in proportion to the rest of his body. Metal in the form of rude metals, a pipe and other articles, were picked out of the earth thrown from the excavation. The History of Western New York, 1804 Human bones of gigantic proportion were discovered in such a state of preservation as to be accurately described and measured. The cavities of the skulls were large enough in their dimensions to receive the entire head of a man of modern times and could be put on one's head with as much ease as a hat or cap. The jawbones were sufficiently large to admit to being placed so as to match or fit outside of a modern man's face. The other bones so far discovered appear to be of equal proportions with the skulls and jawbones, several of which have been preserved in the cabinets of antiquarians, where they still may be seen. New Hampshire giant 9 feet tall, Portsmouth Herald, August 17, 1899. Relics of a prehistoric age have been brought to light in Noble County. The find is in York Township, where workmen excavating for a public highway found the skeleton of an inhabitant of early days. The bones indicate that the person was fully 9 feet tall. The bones are unusually large, and the position of the skeleton when found indicated that the person had been buried in a sitting position. 
The belief is advanced that the remains are those of a mound builder. History of the Town of Rockingham, Vermont, 1907 when the earth was removed from the top of the ledges east of the falls, a remarkable human skeleton, unmistakably that of an Indian, was found. Those who saw it tell the writer the jawbone was of such size that a large man could easily slip it over his face, and the teeth, which were all double, were perfect. This skeleton was kept for many years deposited in the attic of a small building on the north side of the square. This building was then occupied by Dr. John H. Wells' office and drug store, and stood where the Italian fruit store now does. When the building was rebuilt a decade ago or more, the bones disappeared. Bones of giant Indians found in Maryland, prehistoric men seven feet tall who once lived in what is Maryland. Baltimore American, November 15, 1897. There has just been received at the Maryland Academy of Sciences, the skeleton of an Indian seven feet tall. It was discovered near Antietam. There are now skeletons of three powerful Indians at the Academy, who at one time in their wildness, roamed over the state of Maryland, armed with such instruments as nature gave them, or that their limited skill taught them to make. Two of these skeletons belong to individuals evidently of gigantic size. The vertebrae and bones of the legs are nearly as thick as those of a horse, and the length of the long bones exceptional. The skulls are of fine proportions, ample and with walls of moderate thickness, and of great strength, and stiffened beyond with a powerful occipital ridge. The curves of the forehead are moderate and not retreating, suggesting intelligence and connected with jaws of moderate development. The locality from which these skeletons came is in Frederick County, near Antietam Creek. It was formerly supposed to have been the battleground of two tribes of Indians, the Catawbas and the Delawares. Before the coming of the white man, this site was occupied as a village by Indians of great stature, some of them six and a half to seven feet in height. Potomac River Giant. Morning Herald, May 14, 1956. The skeleton of a giant Indian, maybe seven or more feet in height, who died and was buried about the time Christ was born, has been unearthed from prehistoric burial grounds along the Potomac River near Point of Rocks recently. Nicholas Singer, who has been excavating at this and other sites of early Indian villages along the Potomac River in recent years, discovered the skeleton of the giant Indian, along with the other artifacts buried with the body, on Saturday, April 28, just a few weeks ago. Mr. Yinger said that apart from the huge size of the Algonquian Indian, the next most interesting thing about the remains is that the bow and quiver of five arrows were buried with the body. Two elk antlers and three and one half inch arrow points in the center of the tibias are part of the quiver of arrows. Near the point of the antler arrows is a perfect boiled bone fishhook, revealing his fishing line was also placed with the body. Three large white flint triangular arrowheads were found at the side of the left tibia. This aborigine must have been a hunter with great strength, as is indicated by the broad shank flint points used in a powerful bow, explained Yinger. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.